So we move into the middleweight division for the fourth bout in the match between the Western Candidates and the Army. John Bezik for the uh, the Army against Jordan Giles for the Western Candidates. Jordan Giles from Froome ABC. And a proud moment for him, I'm sure, to be stepping up and representing the region. And a lively start already. They're both exchanging close-range blows. The, uh, the Army boy, John Bezik. Looks like he's uh, got plenty of power. Low, holds his hands quite low, but it looks like he's trying to land that big right hand if he can. But at the moment, they're just in a bit of a clinch. So tell us a little bit about these guys then. Yeah, Jordan Giles from Froome. He's a 70 kilo lad, so full on middleweight tonight. Uh, 14 bouts, winning 12 against John Bezik. John from the Royal Logistics Corps, 25 years of age. Uh, Formerly with a parachute regiment, is the tattoo on his right I was going to say, I was yeah. going to say, how can he be logistics when he's got that tattoo? Yeah. That's right. Great shot from him there. Jordan, unlucky in the development championships recently with a, a compatriot of uh, Basic. Big punches from both guys. They're not hanging around, are they? No. So it's a uh, middleweight division, as we say. So plenty of power on display, and the uh, southpaw style of. The uh, Froome boxer, Jordan Giles. Again, getting in a clinch close on, the referee having to have a call break. Just a little bit untidy at the moment, the slight clash of styles between the two of them. Again, a lot going on on the inside there. The uh, Army boxer Bezik just asking a referee to sort it out if he could. So lots of holding and leaning, leaning on here. Just trying to keep the uh, opposition at bay and not give him any leverage. Certainly the power shots coming in from Bezik. Good right hand landed there. He tries another right hook that misses and then an uppercut. So Bezik. Certainly feeling he can attack, and then they both land on the way into the ropes right above us here in the commentary position. Both unleashing and not holding back on the power here. They've uh, sussed one another out close in, and now we're just beginning to see them trying to throw a little bit more from some sort of range. That's right, Jordan there trying to load with the right hand a little bit. His game here is long range, definitely. He's got uh, the longer reach. And, uh, just worn there for uh, a little bit of forearm bars, I suppose, Knight. Yeah. And, uh, good right hand. And he really does need to keep it long against this army lad. Very, very strong guy. Yeah, first 30 seconds, 40 seconds or so that round, they were, they were in close, it was all a little bit untidy, and then when they began to suss one another up, the gap began to emerge between the two and they both started to unload. That's right, I suppose that little bit of adrenaline, you know, uh, a friend of mine, Ian Lindsay, the experienced referee, said you usually let it go for the first 20 seconds, let them get the tension out of themselves, then you stop it and clean it up. And uh, I think that's right. Uh, guys hyped up and, uh, you know, and then eventually they settle into it. Very calm corner there from uh, James Allen and his charge. Yeah, I say good body shot there from James. <laughs> uh, James James Allen, of course, in the over in the blue corner. We we've seen him box here. We have uh, many times, in fact, haven't we? We have indeed. Yeah, first team army, absolutely fantastic going. I quite fancy him to be uh, to be a first team army coach before too very long. Okay. Yeah. Well, he's certainly got the experience in the ring to know what to tell. The younger boxers coming up through the army development ranks. And here we go, round number two then, this middleweight contest. It's uh, Jordan Giles of Froome in the white vest for the Western Counties. John Bezig in the black vest for the army. And if it develops the uh, same way it did in that first round, then we'll see Bezik looking to land that big right hand if he can. And the uh, Froome boxer trying to get that left jab out just a little bit of a range finder so I think certainly uh, 
Jordan is a little wary of the power of the army boxer. And Bezik not afraid to step inside and land shorter range shots if he can. So again, just getting a little bit untidy. Both guys just kind of relaxing now as we go on uh, night. You'll notice um, shot selections of better quality, uh, especially from the soldier there. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I think he's. I think Bezik's just beginning to get a little bit on top of the, the quality of the shots that he's throwing, and he's he's landing more. Very much so. The the Froome guys, Tony Kelly, and his team, uh, just trying to. Encourage uh, Jordan to keep it long keep it get, and better from Good him there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, by no means one sided contest this at all. The uh, taller man, Jordan, uh, seems to have got uh, Bezik trapped holding onto his arm so he couldn't uh, manoeuvre. Jordan Giles. Good couple of uh, left jabs coming out from Giles. And again, just getting into that clinch on the inside. Both breathing really hard as you'd expect. So coming towards the end of the round. Clever, clever. Clever stuff there, a good turn from Jordan. Turn the aggressor in the corner, use his strength against him. And the army guy, these kids coming for it are so strong though, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, they really are. Very so strong. strong. He's maneuvering him around the uh, the ring just by his physical presence. That's right. Well, I suppose you don't get that red berry for nothing. No, absolutely. So last ten seconds of the round. Slight warning for use of the head. Some appreciative applause from the uh, the diners here at the Bristol Sporting Club. And uh, how would you see this one going as we approach the third round, Craig? I think as the guys are settling down, it's making for a better contest. Um, I think the soldier has got a better at work in the moment, Nigel, for my money. Yeah. Uh, what say you? Yeah, I'd, I'd absolutely agree. Yeah. 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 Uh, just, uh, just working his man, his opponent around the ring, isn't he? Landing the better shots. Yeah. Um, nothing to do with work rate as such, but he's just picking his shots maybe better, I think. That's right, yeah. And I think, um, again, it, it, it's all down to, to stamina. Uh, Jordan, by no means out of the contest whatsoever. When he gets back to long range, He's untouchable, but uh, he tends to buy into the fight a little bit yeah. so far. But yeah. tactical change uh, from the corner this round, and it's still anybody's. Yeah. So let's see what happens in the uh, the final minutes of the contest. And, uh, certainly, the army man is uh, just landing those shorter shots. But that's good work by Giles. Traps him in the corner and landed a couple which uh, was not part of uh, Bezik's plan. Bezik just getting in the clinch himself now, just to try and manoeuvre Jordan away from him. But for the first time, the pressure is coming on from Jordan Giles. That's right. And again, long arms, combination shots, fast hands. He's doing the job, but he's getting clipped on the way in. This guy is so, so strong, Lloyd. I see both of us winced a couple yeah. of times. Yeah. Well, he's right-handed, very, very powerful, isn't he? he he's, he's missed with it a couple of times, but he's also landed as well. Incredibly. And, uh, and it gives Jordan Giles plenty to think and worry about as he, as he heads in. And as you say, he's been getting picked off by that particular shot. He's such a good distance boxer, is Jordan. But uh, again, let's look at the stats here. 14 bouts, one in 12 from uh, Jordan. 25 and 17 from John. John, the most uh, more experienced guy. But when he's got it long range, and when you're watching this back, Jordan, when it's long range and fast hands, that's uh, very little to do then, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah. So again, it's all the effort 
been poured into this one. And if uh, Bezic can keep it at medium to short range, he's going to nullify Giles's best at assets, his long levers. Trying to throw that big right again. Doesn't make contact either occasion. And again, just getting a little tidy, uh, being warned for punching to the back of the head when they were in a clinch. So, tiredness setting in a little bit, I think, here, which is, is why they're ending up Ah, uh, we got closing. a cut, unfortunately. Oh, well, that must have been... Yeah, what a high pace competition like this. Yeah. I should imagine that was an accident. Yeah, I'm sure it was. They, they were just, they were just uh, close in in the, that last little skirmish, and I'm sure it was just a clash of the heads. That's unfortunate noise at this stage of the contest. Yeah, unintentional. Yeah. There we go from that's the referee there. Said, yeah. That's a fair comment. Yeah, yeah. definitely. He's probably only got a minute or so to survive anyway. Don't think it's going to get too much worse. Oh, and he lands. Giles was on his way in and got caught by a left hand, didn't he? And then... Ooh, and wince. And then... Big effort by Giles looking to take advantage of the, uh, the blood that will be trickling into the eye of Ross Brackenridge. 10 seconds to go, so he's going he's gonna to make it to the end anyway. That's right. So unfortunate, night, And it is, uh, looks to be a nasty one, too. Yeah. So thankfully it happened in the uh, final round. Once more, appreciative applause from the, uh, the diners here as the doctor has a look at the army boxer. Just make sure that the... Uh, Damage isn't too severe. Might need a stitch or two in it, but uh, we'll wait and see what the uh, judge's final decision on this one was. Thank you, gentlemen. The winner of bank number four on a split decision is Bestwick in the blue corner. Thank you, well done.